So we've said multiple, multiple, multiple times before on this channel, again and again and again, Brexit is going to affect every single industry in the UK. Some in very obvious ways with lack of exports. Others it will affect in, at the moment, unknown and un, you know, unforeseen different ways. We don't know, for example, what the effect is going to be on the market services industries that offer, you know, marketing supplies, you know, social media support, things like that. We don't know anything about that yet. However, there are things that would say stop a UK company working in Europe because any UK, UK marketing company works in Europe, that um, cust potential customer then has to prove from the way that I understand it, so I, I could be wrong on this, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the way that I read I understand it, so if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me. The way I understood it, that if a European customer wants to hire a British marketing firm, they have to go through a whole rigmarole to try and prove that there isn't another marketing company in Europe that they couldn't hire because of um, extra, um, how does how it phrased now, extra services, or doesn't have that expertise, that's it. So they would have to prove that hiring the, the British firm is better because that expertise doesn't exist in Europe. And that is going to be very, very hard to do. And I've said that's going to affect a lot of people. And that's just one industry there's this whole swathe of industries but one of the biggest things that is really affecting uh, the uk industry at the moment is physical goods and especially the movement of physical goods and i have said before that farmers you haven't heard much from them yet but that's because much of their stuff hasn't really kicked off yet um you know pretty much for farmers you know january february march that tends to be it. They don't start working yet. But I guarantee you, in a couple of months, we'll start to see that they can't hire people to come and work on the farms, that they can't hire enough pickers. And then after that, during harvest time, that's when we'll start to see other things come in. Not only that, but we've also seen the government kick the can down the road for implementing uh, goods and checks of stuff coming from the continent into the UK. That is also going to cause a huge, huge problem for us. Because as we've said at the moment, one of the big reasons, um, you know, there are trucks coming from the Europe fully loaded and then they're going back empty. And this has skyrocketed the price for logistics. There's a lot of companies that have just gone, we're just not going to bother because the, the cost is, is just too great. So, you know, <laughs> and we're now going to turn to the dairy industry because the dairy industry currently is really, really being hard hit. So before we jump into today's article, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you to all those people who do support me that way. So on with this. So this comes from The Guardian and the title is The UK dairy firms try to count the cost of churn in post-Brexit trade. A small error in the paperwork a box ticked completely by mistake, and the tanker of butter oil was held at French customs for five days, with veterinary authorities at the border threatening to destroy it. The debacle nearly cost the tax, tax, uh, tanker's exporter, the dairy company, Country Milk, a six-figure sum, and after fraught negotiations, the cargo was eventually repatriated. You don't need too many of those to be destroyed and you are in dire straits, says Phil Langstow, trading director at Country Milk, the UK's largest privately owned dairy ingredients business. With trade from Britain to the EU has somewhat begun to recover from the Brexit disruption earlier this year, some sectors are still in trouble, norm, uh, none more so than the dairy industry. Exports have plummeted in February 
for a second month. And HMRC figures show that last week, with milk and cream experiencing the largest post-Brexit loss out of the top 10 foodstuffs sold to the continent. The analysis of the figures by the Food and Drink Federation show that milk, cream and dairy exports to the EU fell by 97% compared with early in the year, with just £9,000 worth of product exported compared with more than £42 million in February of 2020. Cheese exports for February tumbled from £41 million to £14.5 million, a slide of 65%. Although there was an improvement on the figures recorded in January when the category collapsed by over 85%. Dairy firms say that they face a killer combination of increased costs, complexity and paperwork required to export products such as butter, cream and cheese to the EU since Brexit. With some in the industry fearing the current side uh, slowdown risks becoming permanent. And that's what we've said before. There are other countries in the EU where they can get their stuff cheaper, quicker, and faster. And we've said before, Brexit makes a lot of all, pretty much all UK companies uncompetitive in the EU market. And that will be a loss, a gigantic loss of revenue to a lot of companies. So, like meat and other products of animal origin... Dairy requires some of the most stringent checks, certificates and documentation. A vet has to inspect the produce and stamp paperwork before it can depart for the continent, while traders have to input details into several databases. If there are any errors in the document or a load is rejected by the EU's customs authorities, delivery can be significantly delayed and, in the worst case, be re-exported back to Britain or even destroyed. One of the top 10 players in the UK, in the sector dominated by multinationals, Country Milk used to export around 15 tankers of cream to the EU each week before Brexit. Since January, that has dropped by three quarters to three or just four tankers a week. Trading costs have increased, while transport is often hit by delays and the uncertainty of delivery means some European customers are now offering lower prices for British dairy products. Langso said that Country Milk doesn't yet know the true cost of Brexit for the firm. What we're seeing is, is sustainability is different and significant enough to just not make it uh, worth exporting in a viable number of cases, he said. During the UK's membership of the EU, dairy trade was a two-way street. British consumers developed a taste for continental cheeses from French Brie, Italian mozzarella and Dutch Gouda and Greek feta. However, European consumers also enjoy British cheddar. While the UK produced cream, butter and cheeses are ingredients in many food manufactured in the EU, including ice cream and biscuits. The UK is a net importer, but dairy exports are worth £1.4 to the UK in 2019, with the vast majority of over 86% went to the EU, while just £246 million was exported to the rest of the world, according to HMRC figures. So, not everyone is concerned, though. The trade body, Dairy UK, says the export data will improve over the coming months. The normal patterns of trade are, are resuming as the market smooths itself out, and the national statistics should shortly catch up with the, with the short-term changes, Dairy UK said. However, others in the industry remain unconvinced. Andrew Curl, the Director General of the Provisional Trade Federation, which speaks for the dairy, pig and meat trade, fears the dairy sector's difficulties aren't just, are just not teething problems. He said it's a killer combination of the extra cost and the time and the unpredictability. If you knew it was going to cost you more, but it would get there in six hours, eight hours, whatever uh, you could work around that, said Kurt. You cannot run a viable business on the basis that four in five loads will get there unscathed. We are talking about an industry where margins are single figures. Overseas customers may begin to turn to suppliers in other EU member states who can guarantee on-time deliveries if express supply services in the UK. It could, uh, it could also drive down prices impacting farmers at home. 
new markets may open in the Middle East and Asia, but exporting there may just prove just as complex, says Kurt. If we are, if we are struggling to get into Calais, how easy is it going to be to get into Beijing or even Tokyo? And we've said this before, the idea that, oh, we'll just do a trade deal with, uh, you know, you know, but, you know, Tokyo or Japan or all these, you know, these other quote unquote countries to get these quote trade, amazing trade agreements that we couldn't apparently do before. Um, that paperwork is still going to exist and it's the paperwork and the red tape. And the thing is, the only way, the only organization that are seen to get away from that red tape and do away with it is the EU being in the single market in the customs union so that everyone knows that they are playing by the same rules. <laughs> you know, and we left that. And one of the things that we've often said was that if these free market fundamentalists are so obsessed with you know, the free market and your know, market should dominate and control all, then they've missed out on what is the biggest prize of all, and that is the single market. You know, we've said it before, strip away any of the other arguments and just look at it from a pure economic standpoint. Brexit does not make sense. It does not make sense for us to leave an organisation that has our biggest trading partners in and if when you look at things like trade gravity and trade flow that's not going to change much but nevertheless that's the situation that we're in now unfortunately so you know things are still not um as rosy as the government would like to would so all the government was almost like certainly like them to be so as always uh, thank you very much for watching please do remember to hit that like share and subscribe button and of course down below there is a link to my patreon page as well as a one-off donation link called buy me a coffee where you can well buy me a coffee and as always thank you very much uh, for watching and we'll see you all next time